It's 26th of July 2023, and you're watching A1 AOS specialising in connecting companies with its shareholders. Is what we do best. Hello and welcome back to Aim on Air. My name is Liam. Today I'm pleased to be hosting Sean Day from Greatland. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Hi, Liam. Thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. It, it, it is truly wonderful to have you back. Thank you. Greatland is a leading mining development and exploration company focused on precious and base metals. We're developing, or they are developing, the world-class Javier on gold copper deposit in the Patterson region of Western Australia while delivering multi-project exploration in a low-risk jurisdiction. It, it seems, Sean, the, the community are embracing the icebreaker questions, uh, and I've been sent a couple today. You can choose between uh, sump pits or Australian rock. Um, oh, look, I'm ha happy with either, <laughs> but... Um, let's go for Australian rock, just to make it a little bit different. <laughs> John says, uh, Sean, as every Australian seems to be a fan of legendary Australian rock band ACDC, what is your favourite song by them? Uh, um, I think maybe Back in, back in Black, but the, uh, it is, uh, yeah, no, it, is a, it is a great Australian rock brand that, that used to play during my youth a lot. <laughs> okay, so on with a quarter review for Q2 of 2023. The end of June saw Greatland make its first update to its sustainability report. What are the highlights for you here? Yeah, look, I, I think the sustainability report is a reflection of our growing maturity, and it's again about trying to broaden the, the breadth of shareholders we can attract and, and be kind of match ready when we speak to institutional shareholders because virtually every institutional shareholder will expect you to have a sustainability report. I, I think for me, the, the real uh, you know, stride forward we've taken is we think we've made progress in environmental, social and governance. But I think for me, if I was to highlight one of those, it would be the social engagement with the, the First Nations. Uh, I think that's been highly successful. The relationships we have in the, in the Patterson, we really appreciate that relationship with the Matu people but also the relationships we've, we've developed at um, exploration sites and putting in, in place formal land access agreements, which has been a real focus for us. So, yeah, really proud of that. And we think it's one of the ways we make an impact on the communities we operate within. Thank you. Uh, the 30th of May, you announced a farm into Rio Tinto, South Patterson. Uh, and four weeks later, uh, the drilling begun. And this week, you've announced that you've completed the initial program. We touched on it in the news part of the show. But could you elaborate what's excited you about both Decker and Stingray targets? Uh, and without div divulging too much information, as it's forward looking, perhaps a few words of feedback from the geologists that have been on the ground there. Yeah, look, um, I, I think you know, the Budgie Downs um, tenement, which is where that initial drilling has been undertaken, is a stunning you know, opportunity for us. It's a long structure from Havron, so it's, it's relatively well, it adjoins um, our, our current holdings. And Rio Tinto exploration team, we, we thought had done a great job in terms of um, gathering and, and undertaking geophysical um, work. And what, particularly if you have a look at DECA, it's, and we have a slide in the presentation that's out there, but it's this lovely confluence of EM anomaly, a magnetic anomaly, um, but also a gravity gradient, um, which is interesting because you can see a, a change there. So those are the kind of the three things that you associate with, say, a Havron um, discovery. So we think that you know, exactly what we're looking for and the fact that Rio Tinto had um, worked these opportunities up and then we came in and reviewed them and, and kind of had very similar um, interpretations, we thought only you know, increased our interest. If you look at DECA, it's, it's multiple structures there to, to test. And then Stingray, which is a little bit deeper, also has a, a really highly attractive um, structure to test. So. That, that is the excitement of being there. And I think the, the geos on the ground have been, you know, I, I think the fact that they were able to mobilise a rig to, to drill there within four weeks of the agreement is testament to the way they feel about it. And, and they're excited to have this whole new expanse. It's more than doubled the, the Rio Tinto exploration agreement has more than doubled our footprint in the um, Patterson. 
I think we're hugely excited at the opportunities that bring. Fantastic. Any word on on how long assay times are at the moment from the laboratories there in Perth? Yeah, look, assay times have come um, back a bit. So I think they're more kind of, you know, come, come in from kind of, you know, plus 10 weeks, you know, more ballpark two or three weeks. But just, just so people understand, there's a matter of, you know, getting the, let's say the core, cutting that core, transporting it back up position in Port Hedland, then trucking that back to Perth, then having it processed, then an inter. So although that, the assay component of that has gone from a really long time to a much shorter time, the logistics change and the truck availability still does have quite a bearing there. So please don't expect them to be released in two weeks' time, uh-huh. but but it will be quicker than what you observed in 2022 or 2021. That makes sense. Thank you. Early June saw the wrap-up of the Tasmanian assets for Warrantina and Fire Tower to fling gold. Can you share with us any thoughts about this deal? Yeah, look, we, we were really wrapped to to conclude this transaction um i i think we'd been saying for a while we were reviewing our, our portfolio we felt you know with without for those who don't fully appreciate the geography of australia our Havron, the the office we're based in is all in in western australia and then we had these assets in tasmania which is uh, a state that sits to the south um of of the mainland so it's it's quite logistically different to go down to Tasmania. It's a different t- topography. It's a different geology. We really felt we were geared up for exploration in Western Australia. So we were really looking for a partner there that was focused on, um, on Tasmania and we felt had a competitive advantage to us um, being part-time there. So we were delighted to find um, Flynn Gold so we've put the assets into Flynn Gold, but we've retained an ongoing exposure to their success um, with a combination of equity and a combination of more equity on milestones plus um, a, a royalty interest. So we have ongoing alignment and support and we're a, a meaningful shareholder now of Flynn Gold. But we're really delighted for that to be in a focused organisation that's thinking about how to unlock value in Tasmania. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yasmin Broughton was appointed in May to the board as a non-executive director. Given your comments before about Greatland Board being one of the strongest boards in Australia prior to her arrival, I'm curious and somewhat excited to find out what there is down the road for the company with what lays ahead, because it feels like this is not the sort of board that would be built just for a 30% of, of a gold mine. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, <laughs> I, I would. Um, the so, so look. Firstly, let let me say, you know, Yasmin Broughton is a, a magnificent addition to the board in in a couple of ways. Um, you know, firstly, she's an extremely experienced um, director, including in resources, and interestingly, has sat on another Australian London listed gold producer, being being Resolute. So, he has some direct experience. But importantly, when we did a skill matrix for our board, um, legal was the one area we didn't cover. Yasmin has a background in that. So really is just additive to the team. I think our our board is now full size. I wouldn't expect there to be any additions to that board, but we're, but yeah, you're right. We've built a a management team and a board to to leverage this platform for growth. Um, And we think we have the, the connectivity, the, the the skills and the connection to to optimize the the, the future for Greatland and and look, we think in the short term that's around um, completing the ASX listing and and progressing construction of Havron but you know we're we're pretty open about the three pillars to our growth which is, is delivering this expanded Havron continuing to invest in the drill bit and we we talk about the just now about the Rio Tinto exploration transaction but also looking where we can leverage the platform um, for other financially disciplined opportunities to add value. Thank you. Uh, the Javier on funding update was announced at the end of May. Uh, and as previously discussed um, in our recent Q&A, we've letters of support from the banks confirming the support and enhanced the company's flexibility. Am I right in saying that this saves the company from paying back the loan before we need to actually spend the money? 
Um, yes, I, so not not quite the words paying back the loan, but paying to have the loan in place. Okay. So we were effectively left in a in a position where we had a choice whether we started paying fees on a loan that we weren't going to draw, because fundamentally we felt we had to have the definitive feasibility study to draw that loan. Um, because as we disclosed, I think it was one of the terms, not that we had to have the de definitive feasibility study in, a, in advance, but it was ultimately a requirement of that loan. So we felt for a facility that we weren't going to draw, it was imprudent to start paying fees on it. So what we like to think we've done by us committing to the, to the banks and, and, and them to, to us um, with this letter of support is, is keep it in place, but basically say, you know, we will, we will rejuvenate this um, at, at, at the right point in time. Okay, thank you. Uh, lastly, and, and delicately, I guess, uh, Newcrest have surprised your shareholders with recent decisions of taking on the jury joint venture and then choosing to really rehabilitate the project. Does that now mean it's completed? Uh, no, look, re rehabilitation is, is just an ongoing part of operating in Australia. So really, whenever we leave a pad or um, finish with a, with a hole, we will do some rehabilitation work. I think that's really just saying that is the focus of activity this quarter is cleaning up the pads and um, the drill holes. That is normal in the in the life cycle of expiration. Um, so we're kind of delighted that you know Telfer has taken this on because you know we like to think this this reflects uh, an, an increased focus for them on jury. Um, as as it happens, you know the the Newmont takeover is perhaps you know, distracting for their organisation as, as a whole, but also with us being maybe a little bit more focused on that, you know, doubling our footprint with the Rio Tinto expiration um, transaction, to some extent, jury was unlikely to be a, a, a huge focus for us in the coming 12 months. So we actually kind of see it as positive that Newcrest can um, walk that forward. They've almost done you a favour by taking that on, uh, which means both projects can sort of work at the same time. Yeah, look, and they have a big team active in the Patterson, so I, I, I think it, it's a good fit, but we appreciated that when we were focused on it, that they allowed us to, to be the manager, even though they had the right to become, to take that role. So, you know, we, we think that did reflect a, a really good working relationship and a respectful relationship between the two exploration teams up there in the Patterson. That makes sense. Uh, thank you. On the subject of Newcrest, they seem to have forgotten about Javier on in the recent quarterly update with, with barely any mentions at all. Um, on a recently published side discussing growth options, um, you've always been reticent about discussing Newcrest, but have they spoken to you at all about the plans they have for the next six months? Our joint venture partner is Newmont in, inside of six months. So we really respect Newcrest and we really respect Newmont, but it's likely... Uh... I, I don't think there's a lot of planning at Newcrest right now uh, around what they're doing in six months' time. And, and, I, and what I would say is there's a very clear and ongoing pathway at um, Greatland and indeed, what was it? Was it two months ago now that we renewed um, the, the burn cut contract, which was led by, by the Newcrest team? So, you know, I think there is a very clear pathway as to what's happening at um at Havron, which is we're developing the the asset, continuing to get the decline, and intending to um, reach the top of the ore body and start setting up the um, the stoping platform. So it is, you know, to some extent, it's not quite set and forget because we we should respect just the huge volume of work that's going on at site by a highly capable team, and we appreciate and recognise what they do. But I think from a corporate options point of view. I think this one is well in hand for Newcrest. You know, it's, there's a very clear path forward, especially over the short term. Okay. Um, here's a question that you must get asked a lot. Uh, how confident are you that we'll see an MRE update next month? Uh, and has anyone suggested to Greatland yet where the feasibility study falls operationally into plans, given how mute uh, Newcrest were in their own quarterly update this week? Yeah, I, I guess there's two parts to that question. Um, look, with respect to the MRE, uh, you know, I think I'm on record as always saying our preference is to um, is to undertake the the MRE updates with 
in partnership with our joint venture partner, pre- presently Newcrest. We know work is is going on around that, and, and indeed, you know, we're involved and engaged in that work with our own um, resource geologists. So, yeah, look, we we don't know the mind of of Newcrest, but we we do have some insights um, which we think are positive in terms of the the activity being done. Then, I think they have a, a resource um, update coming out in August. We'd like to think that you know, in our our preference would be that have Ron is part of that. If it, if it wasn't, though, I think I've been, you know, I've said before, as we did in March 2022, if if it wasn't updated, we would look to to provide our own update to the market. Or, although, again, just like we did in 20, March 2022, we would be measured and thoughtful about how we did that and we would have our numbers independently reviewed and verified before sharing them with the market and we would share them with our joint bench partner before releasing them. So. But but people should be confident that the MRE we think is a of of importance to our shareholders. So we the management here is just as as keen as shareholders is to see that in the market um, when ready. In terms of the feasibility study, I, I think it's probably fair to say that that's expected post the 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 Newmont transaction. Of course, there's no certainty that the Newmont transaction will happen, but it, it seems highly likely to be the case. So with that. We think it's needed um, and expected in the, in that early 2024. Would be delighted if we're surprised and and it's earlier than that, but um, that that remains our expectation. And we we encourage Newmont to be definitive with the market, but equally, I think it's hard for them to be definitive at a point in time where they are trying to speculate in as to activity post um, a change in um, their ownership. That makes sense. Uh, thank you. And, and thank you, Sean, uh, for being a guest on our show. That brings me to the end of, of our conversation today. Have you any last words for your shareholders? Oh, look, just really appreciate the support where we are super keen and I'm particularly super keen to, to get back up to London and um, explain how, how we're going with the, the ASX process. But equally, hopefully people understand that it's premature to do that un, until it's been agreed and 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 put in place so i'm the only australian who's avoided going to london uh, or england during the ashes series so um terribly unfortunate for me but um you know work work is the 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 first duty that's that's fair enough thank you sadly that's the end of this webcast ladies and gents if you want to reach out to us you can contact us on twitter with the addresses on the screen and before you close this page i would be grateful for any thumbs ups until next time my name's liam and you've been watching aim on air we're specializing connecting companies with shareholders is what we do best thank you <laughs>